God bless all my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day. It's nine o'clock now to worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. So this teaching today is a blessing because it's going to help us to understand why everything um, is the way it is, right? And understand why the things that we see today are taking place, okay? So you see what the title, it says, when, an un, when, unrighteousness, when an unrighteous person or a sinner talks or preaches about God, it's going to be twisted and mixed with evil. Think about it. Now, Jeremy, think about this. And it's so simple when we just think about it like this, okay? If you're constantly battling with drugs, right? If you're, I mean, that's how they talk in the world. But if you're constantly, you know, doing drugs and you're saying, Jeremy, I want to kick the habit. I, I, you know, I'm working to get over on it. I'm, wor I'm working to stop doing it, right? Would that person really, if that person still finds pleasure and still does those drugs, can that person be a credible person to testify about how bad drugs are? Can that person really be um, um, qualified? Is that person truly qualified to speak on things, you know, like that to people to say, hey, drugs are bad for you. If you think that drugs are bad, then why are you doing it? If you know that drugs kill and people overdose and people die and they create so many problems, then why are you doing it, right? So that person wouldn't be qualified. Like you could, that person wouldn't be able to go to a prison and be like, hey guys, you know, I still break the law. I still rob banks. I still hurt people. I still gang bang. But I'm telling y'all, y'all gotta stop doing that. They would never let, they, whoever is the coordinator of prison ministries, right? That brother would never come back. They want someone that's the opposite. They want someone that's the opposite of the people that they're talking to. Because how else can you truly feel? How else can you truly come from your heart and speak something without being a hypocrite? So you see the title that I, that I wrote. You know, when an unrighteous person or a sinner, which is the same thing, right? Talks or preaches about God. It's going to be twisted and mixed with evil. Okay. Now, in the book of 1 John 3, they talked about children of the devil. Jesus told the Pharisees, he told the, the, the Jews that he was speaking to at that time, that they were of their father the devil because of their sins. So that's what separates you from God is your sins. So whether you're righteous or, you know, you're, 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 you're or you're unrighteous so when you look at when people today are telling you that they still sin no one is perfect I make mistakes so why would what they believe or what they speak be identical to what they can't do or what they don't truly believe in think about it the word is going to be altered why would the word be why would the word be genuine why would it be spoken truthfully when they themselves are not even living truthfully you know according to the word of god how can you if, if think about it someone that's like someone that's homosexual and you want them to tell you what being straight is about you want them to tell you now they're they're they're, they're full full, full blown you know homosexual right whether it's male or it's female do you can you you would you really would you really believe that they can tell you how to be a straight woman or a straight man or how to not be that way what, how, what's the best way of how to be masculine or what's the best way of how to be this or be that and they're the opposite can you picture a homosexual person right that is full-blown homosexual telling you how you know things should be being straight oh you shouldn't be homosexual you shouldn't be homosexual. You should, you should change your life. You, you should become a straight person. And they're homosexual. Right? Are they qualified to speak on that? No. So how are these 99% of so-called Christians today able to even preach and teach in these churches 
when they're constantly telling you that they're sinners, when they're constantly telling you that no one is perfect, when they're constantly telling you that everybody's going to make mistakes. So how are they able to speak on these things and not be a hypocrite? It doesn't make any sense. Anyone else in life, if an alcoholic came to you with his breast smelling like liquor and he telling you, yeah, I'm a recreational drinker, I only drink on the weekends and he's drunk, right? He's still a, a he's still an alcoholic in the eyes of the world. People will still say, man, this, this man's a drunk. Nobody know if you only drink on the weekends, brother. We know right now you drunk. Nobody know you so-called Christians only committing some sins. You saying you sin. So if you sin today, you'll sin tomorrow. That's a, sin is a lifestyle. Righteousness is a lifestyle. Being a Christian is a lifestyle. So you can't, don't want, might want to hear, I fall short sometime. No, you are a sinner. How can you fall? If you fall short sometime, that means that you have the ability and the power to not do it. That's what you're saying. You're saying, Brother Ronald, I don't, I don't do this. I don't sin all the time. So then why do you sin? If you were not able to sin yesterday and you didn't sin uh, uh, last week on Wednesday, why don't you repeat what you did last week on Wednesday? Why don't you repeat what you did yesterday and not do the same sin? It's that simple. If someone comes right now and calls me a name, just walk away so you don't commit the sin of being angry or having contention and strife. Just walk. They can't do anything. Satan can't even do anything to you. You have to give in. That's why the Bible says, submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. That's an excuse. Nowhere in the Bible say that we're, we're, just, we're just destined to sin. No, sin was taught to us. It was passed over us. Right? But the word of God came and destroyed that just by words. Elizabeth and Zechariah, John the Baptist's mom and dad, didn't even have the gospel. Never even heard the gospel. You understand? Never even heard the gospel. Never heard it before they got the Holy Spirit. Read the Bible in Luke chapter one. They said that they did what? They kept the law blameless. So don't talk that talk thinking that people wasn't able to keep the law. No, those who believed in their heart, you're looking at the Old Testament of the majority of the world who disobeyed God. And the majority of those who were Jews disobeyed God. But don't forget about those faithful patriarchs that came before us. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua. Don't forget those people. Daniel, Joseph, who they didn't commit no sin. And we don't got to talk about the other ones who did commit sins. So there was people in the Old Testament who kept the law blamelessly. Job, these brothers, Noah, the Bible mentions it. it said Noah was perfect in his generation, right? So there were people who chose to do it because it's a choice. It's just that majority of the world are going to do it. The Bible proves it. He said, you know, only few be that fine righteousness. It said, but many, many find the, um, you know, the, the path of unrighteousness, the, 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 the road of destruction. Right. It say few be that find it. Right. The straight and narrow way. Right. So my whole thing is. My whole thing is to get you to understand that no one that is saying that they live in sin or they sin sometime or no one is perfect. That means that when they speak the word of God, it's going to be an altered version. Think about it. How can someone live in the oppositely of the word? Even sometime stand on it 100 percent. There's no way their life will go on as normal if they really seen the word the way they're supposed to, they'll be too miserable. What is giving them comfort thinking that everybody, uh, no one is perfect? What is giving them comfort of believing that we always sin? What's giving them comfort of believing that we can't be uh, uh, perfect and righteous and holy and be spotless and blameless? What makes them think that? A false belief. It says it in the Bible. And even when you show it to them, they don't agree. Only the devil hates God's word. Only the devil disagrees with God's word. You've seen the same first and Sadducees since, since the beginning of time. It has always been people that claim to be religious who didn't receive what Jesus Christ said. Always. The unbelievers, the people who don't claim to be of anything, they don't care. It's always the one who got reputation and got something to lose. 
that's always trying to prove that what they believe is right. Right? So an unrighteous person, a, a person that's a, all these pastors on TBN, your pastor, your mom, your dad, they are false. Can't no one be saying that we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We're going to fall. The Bible say walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise. Circumspectfully, some of y'all got master degrees and doctor's degrees, and y'all don't know words. Y'all went to school and did all this learning, but still don't know what these words mean. You're supposed to be highly educated, advanced in reading and writing, right? But you don't even understand that circumspectfully, which is in the Bible, means not to make mistakes. So what are you talking about we all make mistakes? Where did anybody talk that talk? Where did Paul do anything opposite than what Jesus taught? Show me. Where did any of them brothers walk around and say, oh, it's okay you claiming to be Baptist? It's okay, it's okay that, you, that you're claiming to be of Paul. Paul said to be no divine. He said, some of y'all claim to be of, of under me. Some of y'all claiming to be of Cephas and of the Lord and Apollos. He, he said, let, let there be no division amongst you. So they're not even talking the same way. Y'all going to church every day preaching the word of God that God inspired my brothers to write that came before me. Y'all talking Paul's words for 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 for, for vain for vainglory and for and for lucre and material riches, right? But you're not living like Paul. You, where did Paul and Peter speak or teach anything opposite than Jesus? When did Paul open up a church in his own name? When did Paul say he had this particular ministry and named it this? When did Paul say, hey, I'm going to name my church, uh, Faith Outreach, the Word Church, Word of Faith, the Potter's House, you know, this and that. When did Paul do that? How come they sat there and said, let there be no, if any man come and keep not this doctrine, don't allow him into your house, nor bid him Godspeed. Why did Paul say in Galatians, there was false brethren that came in trying to spy out our liberty, who we didn't let speak for not one hour, that the truth might reign with, that the truth might remain with you. They're not saying that today because they're all in denominations. They're all in non-denomination. They're all divided. They'll look foolish to talk about division. How they, what, what are they going to come from out the Bible saying, you know, Baptist is the right way. Apostolic is the right way. They, they're going to have to go to some, some piece of paper that somebody wrote a hundred years before them that was passed down to their great, great grandfather, whoever was the people that had the church before them. That's all they have. They can't go to the Bible and show what they believe. A Baptist, apostolic, Methodist, all them folks, them guys in New York that be debating the word and argue the Bible say no contention. You don't debate the word of God. Paul was being used to open the eyes of people's faith in Iconium to the Jews. He didn't debate with Gentiles or with Christians. What are you talking about? Y'all sitting here entertaining people that are claiming to be Christians and y'all debating about what y'all believe. How do you spend time talking to somebody about what the Bible say when you can see what the Bible say? I'm not going to sit here and debate with you about fornication. You can't read? Then that means you can't understand what I'm saying. If you're illiterate, that means you're deaf and you're dumb as well. Because you, if you sit here telling me that we got to have a debate about what the Bible says, clearly, there's nothing to talk about. Paul was talking to Jews. This was the beginning. You don't see nowhere else where any of those brothers were going back and forth with anybody over God's word. And they wasn't going back and forth over the gospel. Paul was showing the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. He never debated and argued the gospel with people. You understand? Don't be deceived. Okay, don't be deceived. He never argued and debate uh, the gospel people. He was he was proven to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. The same thing John did in First John, and y'all all saying, "Oh, First John one and eight, he's talking to Christians." No, he's not. That's why he said that you may have fellowship with us. He was talking to the Jews. Okay, now these people that are claiming to be these pastors. Why do you think they created pastors to be over churches where there's no instructions? Because they're possessed. Every pastor that's claiming to be a pastor over a church is possessed with demons. Every one of them. Every one of them. Because there's no instructions. There's no one that love God that will do what they want to do without seeing it in the word of God.
No one would do that. No one. The Bible say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? So there's no one that will disrespect God that way to do what they want to do, to go against what was already written. It's already instructed us what to do. Paul said to Titus, he said to appoint elders in every city. He said in, in, in Timothy about bishops, right? And deacons. Never did they mention anything about pastors being over churches. So what would give you that boldness? The same boldness Satan had to rebel against God. The same boldness that Satan had to go and tempt Eve. The same boldness that Satan had to come ask for Job. The same boldness that Satan had to come to Jesus in the wilderness. That same boldness, that same delusion, that same pride to go against what he know is true. Who else would be that comfortable to be like, oh, we're pastors over churches. And there's nowhere in scripture where you could even find instructions on how to be a pastor over a church or what a pastor even did. There's no instructions. So who would be that bold to go against the living God who can destroy you? Who can kill you? Who can take your life? Because you're mocking him in his word. And you just making what you want to make up about God. Doing what you want to do. Just taking tithes and offerings. You ain't seen not one Christian ask for tithes and offering in the New Testament. Who would be that bold to just say, y'all got to give us tithes and offerings? Malachi 3, will a man rob God? Y'all reciting Old Testament scriptures. Something that was written to the Jews and y'all got this. Y'all y'all don't even see people having their own church name. Y'all don't even see people saying they have this ministry in the New Testament. Y'all never even seen someone being called a first lady in the New Testament. Y'all never even seen no Christian pay tithes and offerings in the New Testament. So who would have that boldness but the devil and his demons to deliberately create what they want and go against the grain? Who would do that? When they don't see it in the Bible. Who said to go to church on Sunday? Who said dress up and wear suits and ties? Who said all this? Who said make a choir? And all the stuff that you see. Where do they get the instructions from? They are well organized in these false churches. Let me ask y'all a question. Where do they get their insight from? Who told them to name their church their names that they named them? When how many times would the church of God mention in the New Testament? Who would be that bold but children of the devil who are not affected about the right way and only know the wrong way, an altar version? The devil comes as a what? An angel of light, false messiah, false prophet, the antichrist. He's always trying to mimic the things of God in darkness, though. They didn't say the devil comes as a, 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 a something of darkness. They said an angel that's trying to represent being an angel from heaven to deceive you come on now you ain't learning he never said that he the, the false oh he comes as a false um the false lion they said messiah they didn't they didn't say he comes as christ they said the antichrist they didn't say he comes as a a, a, a false uh police officer they said a false prophet everything that god started first you understand so where did these people get their instructions from what can you show me? Because I know all 27 books in the New Testament. And I know all 66 that's in the Bible. Where y'all want to go with this? Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers. Where y'all want to go with this? Joshua, where do you want to take this to? Judges, Chronicles, Kings, Samuel. Where y'all want to go with this? There's nowhere in Scripture where even the Pharisees had instructions to call themselves Pharisees. And that's a whole nother topic with dealing with the Jews. So I'm telling you from the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? And all the way to Acts and Revelations, there's nowhere where you, what you see today was mentioned in any of those 27 books. Nothing. No Christian ever paid no tithes and offerings. It's not in there. Go, go on Google. Y'all love Google so much. Google it. Google a Christian in the New Testament, put in some money in a collection plate. Who told them to pass a plate around that was metal? Who told them to do that? Who? All our moms did it. All our dads did it. We want the church doing this stuff. 
And ain't none of this stuff biblical. And wonder why people are so far from God. You understand? Who can rebuke me right now and say what I'm saying is not biblical? Well, post the scripture. We ain't going to tongue wrestle. We're going to speak biblical facts. Everyone else get on Jeopardy and Will of Fortune and all these talk shows answering all these questions. Who, who, what's the biggest volcano in the world? What's the highest mountain? Mount, oh, beep, 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 Mount Everest is the, wh what is the, the deepest ocean? Uh, what's bigger? The Atlantic or Pacific? What's deeper? What's colder? Oh, beep, beep, the Pacific, right? And if you get the answer wrong, what do they do? Oh, you lost the money that you gambled with, right? Is that facts or not? So how come in the world they fact check everything? But how come when it comes to Christianity, ain't nobody fact checking nothing? You understand? Ain't nobody fact checking nothing. Everybody just running with it because it make them feel good. Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm buy my way into heaven. God don't want your money. Ain't nowhere in the Bible where money was just given to a church or given to a pastor. The Bible said in Acts chapter 4, right? It say that they came and laid the money at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made to all was was made to all that was in need. So that means that they took care of one another. It was never just given to a pastor. Them lights ain't that expensive. You understand? That you know why you know why you know why they make you pay tithes and offerings? Because they had a vision from the devil, and the devil said, Start this church. Make them believe that they 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 sent from God, because they don't read the Bible, don't believe in the Bible anyway. And their hearts wasn't right. So Satan appeared to somebody and said, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your name known all over the world. I'm going to make you be wealthy like Solomon, right? So their hearts ain't right anyway. So they go for it, right? So they go and get a loan for a million dollars for a building, right? They got to pay that back. They got to pay that back. That's why they begging you every Sunday to bring that money in. They got to pay that loan back. What, what, else, what, what else would motivate them to ask for that much money? And how come when they get the money, they drive in these expensive cars and living like celebrities? If it's all about Jesus, then why does the church all be shiny and all these 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 paints on the, win the windows and chairs and all this latest and greatest technology? If it's all about repeating words that were spoken 2,000 years ago. You see? But see, y'all don't see it, though. You know why? Because y'all love that false Christianity. That's why y'all go to, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Yeah, I, I, I love God. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. I seen this guy earlier today was um was uh getting drunk. And then he was like, oh, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just part of you. Especially if you grew up in America. Man, God name, Jesus name, saying holy Christ, whatever. It's a part of you. It's a part of you. Because it's been taught to you as superstition. That's it. Same thing, black cat. Ain't no cat ever crossed the person and that person died and the cat came and spoke to the spectators and said, hey, I'm the reason that person died. Black cats are bad. Someone came up with it, passed it on. People feared it because they fear what they can't control and they fear the, 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 the unknown, right? So God today is just superstition to the world. That's all it is to the false Christians. To the true Christians, he's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, and God's our Father. But to the world, he's just superstitious. Oh, don't say nothing about God. They live in so much sin. They do all this evil, and they make something they, they care for God. Read the Bible to see what it means to really care for God. They don't do that because they've been taught from their moms and their dads and their their, 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 their ghetto and their, 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 their hood moms and, and you know, self-righteous uh, 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 grandmas and moms about God. That's it. You, just, you, you better respect God. If you want to be, if you want, you want blessings, if you want, you know, good jobs, if you want a good husband, you better pray to God. You out there fornicating with 10,000 men, but you was taught from your mom, pray to God for your husband, not, not to fornicate. Like they'll tell you like your, your, your religious, your false Christian mom or grandma, they'll say, you got to settle down. You can't be shaking with all those men. But it, it's light, though. It's light, right? Because they're older now, so they'll be like, you know, they, they don't look at it like that anymore. So they'll tell you, yeah, you got you know, you to find somebody and just slow, settle down, right? But they ain't saying nothing about how you on Instagram, you know, your posts, the jobs you work, 
walk it coming in your, your grandma's house. Your grandma's so spiritual, right? But she ain't saying nothing about that Louis bag you walking in with. She ain't saying nothing about them nails you got on. She ain't saying nothing about them heels you wearing. She ain't saying nothing about how you're materialistic. She ain't saying nothing about how you lustful. Because she got an altered version of Christianity as well, the grandmother. And all she giving you is one of those Baptists or, you know, all this, this, this discipline, this falsehood stuff. That this was the flesh. That's all she's giving you. Right? So, you cannot be a person that's claiming to be a Christian and saying you sin. That means that you are living unrighteously. I don't care what y'all want to say. It only happens sometime. It don't matter how many times it's happening. If you were to break the law sometime, you'll be a convicted felon. You'll be a criminal. Look at it the way everything else looks at um, doing something, um, you know, a, here, uh, a, a habitual or doing it sometime, you still receive a label over your head. Okay. Whether you smoke crack twice a week or you smoke crack seven days a week, what do they still call you in the eyes of the world? A drug addict. Okay. Whether you rob banks once a year or you rob banks every day, you are still a bank robber in the eyes of the world. Come on now. If you're sick today and then you're sick again in three months and you're sick again throughout the, and, and, they, and you go back and look back at 2023 and 2024, they're going to say, man, you, you were sick all year, right? Nobody going to say, oh yeah, you just was sick. Sometime it happens. I say, man, you were sick all year. You were sick this three months. Nobody sick again, sick again, sick again, sick again. You know, in 2024 and it's coming the same thing. You're living in sin. You just been taught that certain things ain't sin. And you've been taught that certain things is what you're supposed to do. Oh, don't go to the club anymore. Don't drink. Don't smoke and don't curse. You're a Christian now. You're a Christian. But then you're watching Love and Hip Hop, Scandal, Empire, violent movies, listening to music, right? Worldly music, right? Gossiping, jealous, angry, frustrating. Them churches don't talk about that stuff. They only talk about it. When, when someone has wronged somebody and it made it back to the pastor. Or if he was mad at somebody that he connected with and they did him wrong. He gonna be like, don't worry about your haters. God gonna bless you. Your haters can't do anything against you. They, you notice that all their preachings is always to make you look at the situation like it's someone that's just super duper against you. and But they don't, you don't see how that creates bitterness and resentment, right? Because they'll say, yeah, you got to forgive that person because, you know, that person ain't no good, you know, and they this and that and that. And I remember my mom was telling me one time, she went to a disciple meeting or something at her church. And they were saying, one lady was like, you know, do we have to forgive when we forgive, but we won't, but I want, but do we have to forget? Why would she ask that? If you forgive somebody, why would you still want to remember it? You see? So she was confessing that, no, this person wronged me. I want to hold on to this feeling. Right? That's facts. So what I'm telling you is, is that these false Christians only do what you see on the outside. They're sinners, man. They are. They just been taught by the devil and whoever was the person that brought them to this cult to not let stuff be seen on the outside. That's why when y'all see Kurt Franklin, he cursed out his son. Everybody was going crazy in the world. You think that man only cursed like that because his son got him that mad? You don't think that that's how he moved? Think about it. When you got a reputation, when you a CEO, you a manager, you somebody of reputation or status, you can't move around the way other people can move who ain't who are nobodies in the eyes of the world, right? The world, remember, the world puts people on pedestals. I'm saying how the world looks at it now. I don't look at no one on on. I don't. Look, every everyone to me is in darkness who lives apart from the Lord, right? So I only see Jesus, highly exalted. Right. I only see my father, God. Right. Where he needs to be. Right. On his throne. Right. I bow before him. I worship him. Right. So listen to what I'm saying to you, though. So I don't. So this is the reality. So these people that's in the world, they're 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 exalted. OK. So whoever told whoever brought the false Christianity to you, they taught you those things. They taught you how to be, 
how to move, how to act, and how to think. They do, they teach you those little things. That's what they do. So if you're a CEO or you're a boss, you have reputation. So that's what false Christianity teaches you, not to let things be seen on the outside. And if you do, repent to God. But the Bible, but you can't find, remember, remember what I told you? If what I'm saying is not biblical, I don't care who comes after I post this video and has something to say. What am I saying to push you to become better? What am I saying? You're telling me that what I'm saying is not doable. You're saying what I'm saying doesn't make any sense. You're saying what I'm saying is not possible. And the sun is the sun rises and sets every day perfectly. Where well, the Bible mentioned the word perfect. I don't care what y'all want to say, the interpretation of what perfect means. The Bible was already interpreted from those languages. So what we have today was what it is and what it said when it was in a different language. I don't know who Satan used to try to change up, you know, uh, the languages back then. Many words that they spoke in Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, thousand years, thousand years ago have changed. There are not even that many people on earth today that even speak the original Hebrew language or Aramaic. Okay? What we have came from God. Everything else can't be trusted. Okay? Don't come to me with no book that a man wrote. And ain't no man wrote the Bible. Y'all got to get that in your heads. Everyone's like, oh, man wrote the Bible. Ain't no man wrote the Bible. Think about how aggressive people are. See, y'all don't know Satan. That's why y'all are deceived and y'all foolish because you don't know how he moves. You don't know that Satan doesn't come to make you think that it's him. When you see folks writing about God, talking about God, God don't exist. God's a woman. That's the devil. In their heart, the demon merges with them and they merge with the demon. You hear me? The demon merges with a person and a person merges with a demon. Who told y'all that demons climb up walls? Who told y'all that demons are monkeys or squirrels? Who told y'all that? Read the Bible and see what demons did. The woman was talking to King Saul in the Old Testament and she was possessed. The one that King Saul went to, to consult the dead. She was a regular woman. She even got afraid like a regular human being gets afraid. She was talking like a regular human being talks. Y'all don't know the Bible. Y'all foolish. Y'all letting Hollywood create movies like Exodus of Emily Rose and her neck spin around. How can a natural human neck spin around like an owl? How? How can a human go against gravity and climb up a wall? Just tell me how. Tell me how. In the book of Acts 16, the woman was possessed and she was walking and following Paul. You heard the Bible? She was following him. So that means she was moving her feet. You understand? And she was talking. That means that she was speaking. The demon was speaking and then she was speaking as well because she was in agreement. When someone gets mad, listen to me because y'all don't listen. I'm telling you, when you see behavior that's in the world, that's unrighteous, that's the demon. The person conscious defiled and they agree with it. They don't see any wrong in what they're saying because they feel like they're just keeping it real. Some of the demons won't let them go too far. It's not about a demon making everybody think a certain way and act a certain way. The demon job is to keep the people in sin. That's it. So the grace over your life will fade because God sees that you're choosing the world and not him. So he'll allow an accident to happen. He'll allow you to get raped or shot or your child get molested because of sins. Remember what he said? He's going to visit the sins of who? What generation? What did he tell Ahab? Because Ahab did what? He wasn't going to bring evil upon but over his what? Read the Bible. That's right. God don't forget. So you might you might have been born and all this stuff happened to you because of your grandparents' sins. Because of your ancestors before you sins. It's generational curse. You understand? So Satan is never going to make it seem like you have a demon inside of you. You got to catch that stuff. You got to see that stuff. You got to know, some, okay, this is something that's wrong. I'm hearing voices. I'm seeing things that's not there. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's supposed to show you something is wrong because the demon is trying to take over more and more of your body and more and more of your mind. But in the Bible, people that had demons in them were, were functioning like regular people. They came and repented. If demons, don't, if demons don't merge with you and you don't merge with demons, 
then why did Mary Marjolene come to get prayed for? It says she came. So you know she had to repent. She had to be baptized, right? And she had to go through deliverance, okay? That's the scriptures. Why did in Acts 2, all them folks that received what God said through, through uh, Peter and was baptized, the Bible said they continued in apostles' doctrine, prayer and breaking of bread, right? And fear came upon every soul. Then it says that many signs and wonders were done amongst the apostles, right? Well, why wasn't the sign one done before? They had to grow to see who they were, to know they need deliverance, okay? They were only pricked to their heart when they first heard what Peter said. Acts 2 verse 37. So as they continue in apostle doctrine and they were seeing how their heart was still drawn to the world. They were seeing how they still got angry. They were seeing how they were still lustful. They were seeing that they had all these different things going on. They knew they was possessed. Why else would miracles be done amongst Christians? Come on now. Why else would demons be casted out amongst Christians? Who do you think was getting demons casted out of? Remember, 3,000 was added to the church. Now you carry over to Acts chapter five. Who do you think was bringing out couches? Who think was who think was getting touched by Peter's shadow? Come on now, these folks that came on board because they had darkness in them. Mary Marjolene had seven devils in her. They were sinners. You never seen no person that followed Jesus Christ get delivered from a demon after their first initial encounter with him. You never seen them going through prayer after they got. You never seen Peter and them go through prayer. You never seen Mary Marjolene get prayed for again. Never. It's a one-time thing when you're truly serious. Okay? So the people that followed Jesus, the 120, you never heard them. Oh, yeah, the ones who followed Jesus the most, they got prayed for over and over. It was always different countries, different cities that he went to. People was getting prayed for. Not the folks that was following him. Read the scriptures. So my question is this, why does Satan not want you to know that he's in you? He's in the whole world apart from those who have the Holy Ghost because your conscience will be affected by knowing that reality. It's just that your conscience is defiled. You don't see any wrong because the law allows you to live the way you live without punishment. You can curse. You can watch violent movies. You can watch pornography. Right? No one's going to come arrest you. You can go to a strip club and see naked women. You can go to nude beaches in certain states and it's allowed. You can listen to music that talks about killing people because they say it's an expression of art. Wickedness is an expression of art. Rap is art. Art of what? Art of what? All rap talks about is unrighteousness. It, even if they say, my mama, I grew up in the ghetto. I had to sell some drugs to get it out. Unrighteousness. You can't sell drugs in this country. So everything you rapping about is glorifying the devil. Everything you singing about in R&B is lustful. It's lustful. I listen to that old school R&B. It was lust. They was wearing bottom booty shorts back in the 70s. It's no different. Okay? Lust been around. They just pass the torch on to the young generation. You understand? We've been fighting, this country been fighting wars. Violence has been what this country stood on. You understand? So that's the point I'm trying to make to you. Satan knows that people knew these truths. They wouldn't sleep comfortable at night because they possess. But they think possession is when people just do this, do this and do that. That's out of control. But that happens to a lot of people. Some of y'all just didn't get caught for what y'all done. Some of y'all, you know, uh, uh, you know, have been spared for you losing control. Some of y'all have done things that you're not too happy about, right? Or there's a lot of people in the world that have done certain things, you know, that they question, right? But because of this, this grace over people, because the world has to be balanced, right? Some things are not allowed to go further. So, it, so God al allows it to be a warning. God allows it to be a warning. He allows it to be a warning to you. So you say, man, all this stuff is happening. 
and all this stuff is going on. And he allows that to be um, a warning unto you. For you to see that, okay, something is wrong. Okay, you go to doctors first. You take medicine, you smoke weed, smoke cigarettes, you drink. Nothing brings relief. So your conscience, your conscience is supposed to find its way to God. To say, hey, you know, I, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is, nothing has helped me naturally. So some kind of way, God will whisper in your ear and say, hey, you know, it's darkness. It's the devil. That's all you know. Right? The opportunity. Whether you go to a false Christian church, whether you, you know, you, you don't listen, then you, God gave you opportunity. Okay? Because he's right. He said that the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Okay? That's what it says. So that means that everybody on earth, it don't matter when they died, how they died, had an opportunity because God promised it to come to God and to know God's word. Every human being. Everyone. That's how real it is. Okay? So that's all I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. That how come Paul and them fought to keep the truth of the gospel? But how come today you don't see anybody doing that? Like, no, the Bible says this. The Bible says that. We're not supposed to take time. Like, why are nobody just going directly off of what they see? Because they're all possessed. They're all possessed. All of them. Your moms, your dads, all people that's sitting here that's not doing what the word of God say as a Christian, they're possessed. It tells you exactly what to do. What's the problem? You can read. They're educated. They got knowledge. They got, they got what they believe is wisdom. But nobody is doing what that Bible says. Except those who have the spirit, which is 1% on this earth. Google said there's 2 billion Christians. They're all false. They're all false. They're giving a, they're making, they're giving a bad name to God amongst the world. Okay? Because our country was built off of false Christianity. It was brought here, the false Christianity was brought here by the Protestant and they taught all this division and people liked it. You know why? Because they was able to live in sin. They was able to do what they wanted to do. They was able to live how they wanted to live and still believe they're going to heaven and still believe that they're, they're right with God. So they, they, they gravitated to the false teachings and it's been passed down. But let me ask you a question. When you read those 27 books in the New Testament, did Paul ever name a church after himself? Did Paul ever say, this is Paul's something such a ministry? Did Paul ever say, I have to go pay tithes and offerings? Or, you know, uh, give me tithes and offerings. Did Peter, James, John, Jude, any one of those brothers ever say, hey, put a pastor over a church. Hey, first lady, you know, hey, tithes and offerings. Hey, name your church, whatever you want to name it. Call it whatever you want to call it. Why didn't they do those things? Remember, Christ came first and preached the word of God. And he passed it on to his apostles. And they, apost they passed it on to those whom the Holy Spirit had appointed, okay? Who the Lord had chose. And they did the same thing. So how come today in our generation, in a thousand years before this day, they all been doing what's false? Because they're possessed. That's the only, the only person that will go against the truth of God's word and can't do it and won't do it is the devil. And the devil's demons and spirits. That was in people. Don't, don't be deceived. When Jesus walked this earth, he cast out many demons out of people. Right? That were just regular. The guy said that my son is tormented sometime by a demon. The demon throws him down in fire and, 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 and water. But the, the child still was a regular human being. Okay? So you see many times the man in the tombs that had 2,000 demons. He talked to Jesus. And the demons talked as well. Because they merged with you. Okay, that's the way it works. You will know that you possess because things will be happening because they come from a different place other than this world. Right. And they come from straight darkness. 
but it's grace over everybody. So it depends on how far God allows the demons in you to go. How far he allowed them to make you hear or see things or affect your body. Cause your body to have these challenges. Shaking, nervousness, anxiety. It depends what God allows. Some folks can manage it. Because God don't care what you believe in. You were, you're, you were destined before you chose to be what you was against him. He already put you in this world. Knowing that you was going to be that. To prove his word to be true. So he'll preserve you. Because the world has to be balanced. Everybody just can't die in one day. There's many things that God will use people for in this world before they go on into hell. Many things. Because this world has to be balanced. Okay, so he's not, he doesn't care that a person believes in whatever they believe in. He don't care. He'll preserve you just to show you Keep you alive and show you that there's no help in your God. There's no peace in your God. No matter what you're doing on the outside, no matter what, no matter how many times you pray, no matter how many times you shave your head, whatever a person believes in, you have no peace. What kind of God do you serve that can't help you? It only proves the word to be true. Everybody claiming to believe in the true gods and believe in the true whoever they believe in, but they still go into the world to receive medical treatment. If everything is, if everything that a person goes through is what their God chose for them, right? Then what is the point of believing in those gods when they can't do anything for you? They don't, you, you, they never even shown themselves, right? But we know Satan has power as well, okay? Every, every so-called religion knows about the devil, Every so-called religion knows about the devil. So we know the devil can do many things as well. People thinking it's God and thinking it's this and it's thinking it's that. But one thing people know they can't, they know, one thing they know the devil can't give them or their gods is peace. It's joy and protect them from things of the world. Okay? So if everything is designed to happen the way it's supposed to happen, Okay? then what's the point of having a powerful God, a powerful person that you believe in? That's just excuses. Because if we accept the fact that everything is, is my God's will for me, right? Then that won't allow you to seek somewhere or something else where there is true power. Because you know these trees, this world, this earth is being held up by power. You know, the sun rising, setting every day perfectly is being brought up by power. Okay? And you know, through Christianity, the Bible talks about healing, deliverances, and power. First of all, got to believe in it. Because remember, believing in these things will make you have to not believe in what you believe in. Okay? But God will allow people to be here who believe in different things just to show them that his word is true. Not the false Christians. But he will show you that his word is true. You don't, you don't never have to even meet a, a true Christian in his life to know that God's word is true because no other book speaks for righteousness. No other book came before the Bible. No other. There's no book that you know that was created in Genesis, um, before Genesis. Care what nobody say. They try to come up with, oh, you know, there's just older books in the Bible. Okay. Who told you that? Okay. Who told you? Did you, was you there? No, I know because it's documented. So is the Bible. Why you don't believe in that? You don't believe in what the Bible say. And these things are all documented in facts. They done found things in everything that's in the Bible. Jerusalem things in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Places that, that, that was mentioned are still there. Ancient artifacts were found. All type of stuff. But they believe that a book is older than the Bible. Who some man wrote. Or came up with. And they're saying this, this is actual facts. Why are people so opposed against the Bible? Why would you believe this book is older than this book? Because someone said it? So why you don't believe what someone is saying in the Bible? But you believe what someone is saying outside of the Bible. Make it make sense. If you wasn't there, right, before the Bible was written and you seen it for yourself, what can prove to you that whatever book you discovered is truly older than the Bible? What can they tell you? 
what are they going to say? Oh, back then it was dragons. Back then it was flying uh, 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 dragons and there was unicorns. Oh, yeah. Up, see, 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 it's old in the Bible. You know how I know? Because the Bible didn't mention unicorns. The Bible didn't mention this. Oh, yeah. Look, th this book says that it was a it was a paradise and an oasis and coconuts and palm trees. But the Bible mentions all those things. You can't even come up with words that that book will say it has that will be able to go against the Bible because they will have to talk things that doesn't exist. They have to create things that's not in existence today and it can't be proven. That's facts. Everything written in Genesis is still here to this day. Everything that the Bible spoke in the Old Testament is still here to this day. Remember, it was mentioned about Navy and, and, and with, uh, with Solomon, okay? It was mentioned about sheriffs and governors with Daniel. What do we have today? Don't we got sheriffs, governors? All this stuff was mentioned in the Bible. Judges, come on now. I'm talking about all over the world now. We ain't just, remember, remember, Christianity was never forced on anybody. I don't care what nobody got to say. It was never forced. Nobody died because they didn't believe in Jesus. This wasn't forced. People conscious agree with it. Even the ones who were just faking being Christians. They still understand that Christianity is a symbol of righteousness. It's a badge of honor. People understand that. People know in the world that people will, people will accept the person that portrays to be righteous than unrighteous. That's why many folks in the world gravitated to false Christianity. Because they know consciously that it's a symbol of righteousness. All of it is about peace and love and forgiveness. Okay? When has those ever, when have those things ever destroyed the world? So that's why so many false people uh, gravitate to it. Because they was given a false version of Christianity. Pay your money. Go to church on Sunday. Like nothing they do makes any sense. Nothing. They talk the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day. They talk the Sabbath day. But then they go to church on the Sabbath day. Like none of it makes any sense. They talk about tithes and offerings. But they're not even doing it right. As, as they did in the Old Testament. Like it's, it's all darkness. It's all darkness. These people are all... I don't want to hear nothing about no pastor in New York, New Jersey, and California, Florida. They're false. All of them are false. Show me how one is true. Don't get up here talking with your demons in you and trying to talk. Well, brother, I just feel not think the devil will say that. Paul said, we have in the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believe. Don't come up here commenting on my YouTube, and my Facebook, talking about what you think and you feel. Okay, I'm telling you to show me what people are doing today. They have instructions from people or they seen in the word of God, them brothers doing the same thing. Why did Paul and them brothers never have their own church name? Why wasn't Paul and them divided or separated? Why wasn't they? Why did Paul and them never call their wives? Well, not Paul, I'm talking about the brothers, call their wives first ladies. Why did they never appoint a, a woman to preach and teach? Why was woman never given a calling? So where do they get all this stuff from? Only the devil would do that. Okay, let's move on. Satan twisted the scripture with Jesus. The devil always twisted the word wherever he went. He knows the word, but twists it. Children of the devil do the same thing. Okay? Remember in the, in the garden, in Genesis, he said, did God say? Right? So, and then you see... In the garden, I mean, in the wilderness, he misquoted Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12. But he, he couldn't recite it accurately. You never see these preachers preach the word accurately. You never see it. I'm talking about the whole message. I'm not saying one verse. I'm not saying they can't read to you one verse and they read it precisely as what it says. I'm saying the way they interpret that verse and they preach it is always going to be not as serious as what, what they're reading. It's always going to be a different or another meaning on top of what it already means. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't be, don't be, don't, don't be foolish, you know, and, and, and move about with mischief. 
I'm saying they can read it and say, yeah, it says right here, love your neighbor, love yourself. But they'll say, yeah, but you know, my neighbor means, you know, because in the Old Testament, like they'll start mixing stuff. I'm telling you. And be like, well, my neighbor, a neighbor means, you know, because look right here, it says don't be unequally yoked. So I'm not I'm probably unequally yoked. I'm supposed to be neighbors with someone I'm supposed to be unequally yoked with. You see what I'm trying to say? They'll start twisting it like that. That's Satan. Because the whole part is they don't want to love everybody. That's what they're saying in so many words. So they're trying to use and misinterpret the Bible, right, to their advantage, to make them believe that that verse has different meaning than what it is. Okay? Remember, I told you my mother's pastor was saying that when Jacob was wrestling with the angel, he was wrestling with anxiety. He was wrestling with fears. He was wrestling with worries. He said that. Nowhere does it say that in the, in the book of Genesis when Jacob wrestled with the angel. It said he wanted a, he wanted a blessing. Whoever, whoever was in the presence of God and didn't want to receive a blessing. Okay? The Bible said he was a warrior who didn't, who didn't seek him. He contended for that grace. He contended. The Bible said he must contend for the faith. So he did that. That's all he did. He wrestled because he wanted to be blessed. Right? He knew he was in the presence of God. He said, no, until you bless me. He wasn't letting go. I wouldn't let go either. You understand? I want to go to heaven. I'm going to hang on for dear life. You know, to receive that grace, that blessing, to show God I'm willing to fight. And to the end, Paul said he fought the fight. So did Jacob. Okay? But they'll say that and they'll come up with a sermon and say that, oh, see him wrestling? That was him dealing with, you know, them demons. And then like they'll use it as like a metaphor. I'm telling you. Instead of just telling you exactly what it was, he wrestled with an angel to receive a blessing. He wrestled with God, and his name, and and he touched the, the 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 angel touched his hip, and he walked away limping because whenever you have an encounter with God, you don't leave the same. You leave different and transform and change. Okay, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, and after that wrestling match, what did God say unto him, and what happened? What was God revealing to Jacob after that fact? Come on now, that's right. Every one of them brothers had to have some type of encounter with God. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They all did. Even Moses. The burning bush. The staff being thrown. Oh, oops. The staff being thrown down. Everything. They all had their, you know, their encounter with God. Okay? Before God. Even, even when God first called Abraham, Abraham's name was Abram. And Sarah's name was Sari. It wasn't until many years later that their names changed. Because they, they seen the faithfulness. The diligence. Same thing Jacob had to go through. Right? Prove his faith. Remember, there was no ten, there was no Ten Commandments in Genesis. There was no laws, so they had to prove. They, they, remember, they said uh, uh, Abraham uh, faith in his works. Okay, he trusted in God. Right, he just heard God say one thing and believed in it, and that was it. He trusted God, so Jacob fought. That's all he knew. Okay, there was no there was no Ten Commandments. There was no laws. There was no nothing. Just this is God. Okay, what are you gonna do? That simple. Okay, but they were these these false pastors, these false bishops, these false apostles, these false prophets, these false Christians, in all these non-denominational and denominational churches. Right? Let me let me just tell you this. If a church if a church claims to be non-denominational, and they claim to be denominational, they are possessed. Who told them to name that? Who who would be that bold? And not fear. When they seen angels in the Old Testament, they was afraid. Look at Samson's mom. Look at Samuel's mom. When they seen angels, whenever they thought, them angels had to tell them not to fear. Fear not. <laughs> you know, they would tell them that. Because they they feared God. When, Sam, when, when Saul offered up that sacrifice, what happened? The throne was ripped from him. When he grabbed Samuel's uh, clothes and tore a piece, what did God say? The kingdom was uh, divided. Took it from him, given to, to uh, David. Where do you see in the Old Testament where they, where, where they played with God? Who didn't fear God in the Old Testament? Who didn't do, if they didn't do what he said, what happened? God didn't kill the king in the New Testament for not giving him the glory? This man wasn't even a believer. Like that, and God smited him. What happened when Judas killed himself? The Lord said, which never was born. Like, y'all are not reading scripture. What did they play with Jesus? I'm talking about the believers, the followers. 
Where? Where did they play what Jesus said? These people died for him. They People that today never would die for Jesus. They would avoid death because they avoid the truth of God's word anyway. Death will never come to them. Satan will never try to take their life because there's no threat to him. Them folks denied themselves. You see all through the Paul said, I've been hungry. I've been a base. I've been abound. Peter and John said, silver and gold, I have none. I have none. Right? So these folks live like Jesus. Jesus didn't have money like that. Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. Neither did Jesus. Jesus had the money bag. Paul said, we have no certain dwelling place. Neither did Jesus. They faced persecution every day. So did Jesus. Show me where Paul and them was different than Jesus. Show me where they were bold to say, we're going to have, I got this ministry. It's called handkerchief and aprons ministry. Because God did unusual, God has anointed me and blessed me with this ministry. Because I can, handkerchiefs are rubbed on my body and given to those who are sick and vexed with unclean spirits and they're healed. So I, I believe that God is, is calling me to have a healing deliverance ministry. And I'm going to call it handkerchief and apron ministry. Come on now. Peter. Well, the Lord said, upon this rock, he's going to build my church. So I'm going to call my church Rock and Salvation Ministry. John. Well, the Lord said I was the one that he loved. I'm going to call my church Love Ministries. Thomas, the Lord always said I was doubting. So I'm going to call this, you know, you know, he's a God of a second chance ministries. Don't give up the faith ministries. Touch the, touch the, touch the wound in my side ministries by Thomas. Okay. Okay. James, I'm going to call it the son of Zibi ministry. Why did none of them people do what these new so-called Christians are doing? Why are they not following the holy brethren that came before them? They gave us the instructions. You think it's hard to, to, to have a living church? How? We got all the instructions. First of all, people will have the Holy Ghost and the Spirit will be there. Okay? The Lord will do it himself exactly identical to how it was in Scripture. That's how we're living. What are, we, what are we doing different? They couldn't sin. They couldn't fornicate. They couldn't be powerful. Neither can we. So what's the difference? It's the same thing. What are we doing different as a true Christian than they did? It don't matter what generation we're living in. Moses, Moses lived at a time before the world was more advanced. Than it was in, in, in the Lord's days. He still walked before the Lord and obeyed him. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they lived way before the world was even as popular as it was in Pawnham days. And they still obeyed the Lord. What's the difference? It don't matter how much technology, it don't matter how easy it is to do sins. You can sin in your mind. You can sin in the thought. You can sin by looking at a woman or looking at a man. It don't matter because of the age that we're in. It's the same commands. Okay? So, that's how many people are possessed. That's how big it is. All the non-denominational churches, all those denominational churches, they're possessed. That's why the word of God is not authentically copied 100% as it was. They created all this stuff and made up what they wanted to make up. That's why it looks like that. Because it's not real. That's why they can't do it. Because Satan can't do what the word says. That's right. Because he's the opposite. Remember, light and darkness doesn't mix. So why do you think those people that's in darkness claiming to be Christians 
can't do what the words say because light and darkness doesn't mix. They can't do it. That's why it looks the way it looks. That's why it's church on Sunday, suits and ties. It's all designed to make themselves and the world see them as whatever they think they, they want to be portrayed. That's why it's designed for that. But a true Christian and God knows the truth. Right? And they can't change those words. They done wrote many books. All of them, them so-called pastors wrote many books trying to tell you all this stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, that's how Satan does it. He uses people to influence you because they can't change the word. God won't let them. Okay? Because there's going to be people, when you die off and your, your sins and your lie, they're going to still be people that's going to grow up that's going to need to see the truth of God's word. So Satan can't alter. It wouldn't be fair. That means that the world wouldn't have opportunity to come to God. So he won't let him touch it. But he'll let him move people to write books, to do movies, to do interviews, podcasts, and say well, all they want to say. You know, yeah, you know, we, we done got too serious. We done, we done, man, say whatever you want to say. What you saying and them little verses you're using will never outweigh the truth. Never. Never. You only know a whole bunch of what you know so you can deceive people the further. That's it. That's why you know so many verses, because it's designed to deceive people, to make them feel that they can trust you and believe in you. And you know what you're talking about, because you can quote things from Genesis and Exodus and Numbers. You can do all that, quote, you know, most of the Psalms. But guess what? You are ineffective of doing what the words say. That's facts. And your heart is for the world. The Bible says, Smith will have to rule over you who faith follow, who has spoken to in the word of God. That's what the Bible say. Not someone who just talks the word. The Pharisees did that, and they were sinners, and Jesus called them children of the devil. Okay? False Christians still sin. They were only taught not to sin in public or let people see their sins. They only became more secretive and reserved in their sins. I already talked about that earlier, though. That's all I'm telling you. A false Christian is no different. I'm telling you. Y'all got to look, watch these teachings. The truth of God's word, have your Bible and go around people that claim to be Christians and watch them. Watch them. They smooth at what they do. You got to know God's word to see it. Them folks riding around with them signs all day. You ride by, honk for, honk for Jesus. Honk for Jesus. Got the signs on them. You know, the Lord's come and repent. Follow them. They be angry. They be upset. They be aggressive. That's the devil. That's the devil. I'm telling you. That's all the enemy. He don't want man. I, I, you don't. You don't know hatred like the devil knows hatred. You don't know it. The devil hates God. He knows that the world loves sin. He will do anything he can to keep people in sin. They never today tell you you have to accurately preach the word um, of God. They're not serious about the authenticity of God's word. You never see them talk about that because they will never do that because that will convict them. That will expose them. That will probably make the demons start manifesting in them if they were to go to truth in God's word. You got people that's up. You got people saying he's a man of God could preach God's word, but his whole church name is a false church. Remember, some of these folks believe that they're sent by God. But before they were born, Jesus already told, about, told people about the false teachers and the false prophets. Okay? Little children, 1 John 3. Let no man deceive you. He that's righteous, he that, he that, um, bug one in my eye. He that's, uh, uh, he that, he that does righteousness is righteous even as he's righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil for devil sin from the beginning. For his purpose, the Son of God was manifested by the the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for he remains of he cannot sin because he's born of God. And this is children of God are manifest, and children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he not of his brother. You see that? So all of them that's claiming, all of them that's claiming to be Christians, and they're telling you that they sin, they're telling you that they fall short, they're telling you that I, I, I don't do what I want, but I'm not what I need to be. Or they're telling you that, you know, everybody make mistakes. They're living unrighteous. Those mistakes are unrighteousness. The Bible says whoever does unrighteousness. Come on now. So even they're saying that it's sometime. 
or it's part time or it's not all the time, it's still unrighteous when they are doing it. And what does it say? Whoever does unrighteousness. Think about it, man. They're not saying if you do it sometime, if you do it all the time, if you do it one time, it's unrighteous. If you say that I sin sometime, no one's perfect. I make mistakes. I got you. You're unrighteous. It's that simple. That's why the word of God will never be preached accurately because you don't see it accurately. If you really seen the word of God in, in its true form, how would you not be fearing and trembling? Paul saying, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. He said, whom we preach and we teach, warning every man. What, what, what are you talking like, What are you talking about? Paul commanded the brothers that, they, that he said, rebuke them. You know, before others, all my fear, they preach no other doctrine. But be sound. Uh, preach sound doctrine. They wasn't playing. They wasn't playing, brothers and sisters. Today, anybody just gets up there and start preaching. They were not having that back then. You were not, you were not just getting up there and just going out in the streets and just start talking about God. Remember, Stephen and Philip, remember those two guys? What did they do? They sat them in front of the apostles. They said, find us good men full of the Holy Spirit with honest report. They had to have a, a clear name, a clear jacket. Today, everybody's claiming Jesus just run out there and start trying to preach. It was never that way because demons are doing that. It's all designed to cause divisions, dysfunction, disorderly. Think about it. There's, these people that's walking around today claim to be Christians, they're not Christians. That's why they don't greet you. The Bible said to greet another with a holy kiss. Okay? It talks about us being saints, the salt of the earth. Right? It said, let your light shine before men. How can we all say we, have, we believe in the same God and we're all brothers in Christ? It makes us even more closer than just being human beings. When we have the same religion and same belief and we have the same faith. Why are people not pressing to walk around this park right now and ask everybody, Hey, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Man, our God is good, isn't he? Nice to meet you. It's always like something has to be said. Like some, oh yeah, I'm blessed. Oh, me too. And highly favor. Amen. Isn't, isn't our Lord good? Like it's fake. You'll walk past pe more people in your life who won't speak to you than people who will speak to you. But as a Christian, you're supposed to greet everyone if they were true Christians. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to explain to you. But remember, 200 million claim to be Christians. They claim it. Google says it. How many are doing what the Bible say? Because they're not Christians. They're possessed. That's why they church names are not the same. I'm telling you, it's not the same as the Bible. It don't matter what y'all loyal to. Your loyalty comes because the demon in you is loyal to Satan. So you feel what the demon feels to that false pastor, to this false religion, to this false church and those false doctrines, because that's how the demon feels to complete his assignment, to keep the world deceived and to keep them in sin and keep them in darkness. Your loyalty is what the demon feels because the demon has merged with you. Peace unto you all. God bless.